Matthew, the 25th chapter. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Matthew 25. That's something I want to share with you this morning before we actually get into the text. It doesn't have really, I don't think anyway, it might when we get to talking about it, but it's not something that I put into the sermon, but it's something that I thought was good, and as a matter of fact, it kind of goes with the what we've been preaching on before this morning. And it's something that uh, Charles Spurgeon, a story that he had told, and he was a great preacher of the Gospel, says he was strolling through a village. As he walked along, he saw a man going down the road with a herd of pigs following in line behind him, like sheep, following a shepherd. This was a very unusual sight because pigs ordinarily are very self-centered, independent creatures and never follow anyone, just run around and do whatever they want to do. I'm sure you've seen that before. So the preacher asked, Sir, how do you get those pigs to follow you like that? The farmer answered and said, Oh, it's easy, preacher. I have a sack full of peas in my pocket. And I just keep walking. And occasionally I'll drop a pea along the road and they'll gobble it up. They just keep following me, waiting for me to drop another pea, never caring where I'm leading them. That's very clever, said Charles Spurgeon. He said, by the way, where are you leading them? He said, to the slaughterhouse, of course. Yeah. yeah. That's the way the enemy works. Yeah. He'll leave a trail of something yummy, you know, for you to follow. Never showing you where the end's going to be. Amen. Where it's going to end up. Chill on that for a while. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Like I said, that don't have a lot to do with our sermon. That's too good for me not to share with you. Yes. Amen. That really that really got me. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Matthew, the 25th chapter this morning. We're going to talk about what Brother Tyler talked about for a few minutes Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably going to preach about as long as he did. Not many things. <clears throat> Times 10. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Y'all didn't let me finish. Matthew, the 25th chapter, talking about the ten virgins. The Bible says, and this is Jesus speaking, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now I want us to look first before we move any farther than this. The Bible says there were ten virgins. So that's something they all had in common. They were all virgins. Which took their lamps... So they all took a lamp with them. And they all went forth. They all started on their journey to meet the bridegroom, Brother Bill. Yeah. So, so far, I don't see any difference in this group. Ten virgins, they all have a lamp. They've all started out on their journey. They're going to meet the soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Amen. Amen. They started on their journey. But then the Bible says in verse 2, Five of them were wise and five were foolish. And you might think, well, wait a minute. So far they look the same to me. Yeah, but he's getting ready to show us the difference between wisdom and foolishness. Between being wise and being a fool. Oh, my, my, my. I could preach this morning. Wise and foolish. What made the difference? Up to that point, they seemed the same. Here's the answer. In the third chapter, the Bible says... They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. <clears throat> Did you hear that? They didn't take no oil with them. <clears throat> we'll read in a minute where the wise, not only did they take their lamps, but they took a vessel with oil in it. Because you see, your lamp can't burn on what's just in the lamp forever. Has to have some more oil added. Somewhere along the line. Amen? But why didn't they? Why didn't this group take? Well, i tell you what. Maybe, oh my, 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 maybe we could try to find some deep theological answer for this, but I tend to go the simple way because that's usually the truth. Amen? But maybe the simple truth is that they thought they had enough to get by. Yeah, that's what they thought. Amen? Yeah. Oh, that preach this morning. We got a whole multitude of people who think they got just enough to get by. 
Amen. How many times you started out somewhere and looked at the gas hand and you thought, oh, I can make it. Yeah. Amen. Ain't no sense in getting no extra. I can make it. And before you got there, if you got there, maybe you ran out of gas. Yeah. But if you got there, you were praying, Lord, God, don't let me run out of gas before I get there. And he's thinking, why didn't you get you some more fuel yeah. before you started? Yeah. And he has mercy and goes ahead many times and lets us get their own fumes. But you can't go very far on fumes, amen? And this group, Brother Bill, these fools, the Bible says that, I didn't, amen? Yeah. They thought they had enough, just enough to get by on. Amen? Amen? We got a whole mess of people like that today just trying to get by spiritually by the skin of their teeth. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? They want just enough of Jesus yeah. to keep them out of hell. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Don't want no more of it. Don't want to go no deeper. Just enough. Matter of fact, some of them, it seems like, they want to see just what they can get by with and still make it. Just what can I do and still make it to heaven? Shame on you. You're a fool this morning if you think that a little dab will do you. Amen? Because if the journey's longer than you thought it was, you may run out of your little dab and find yourself running on an empty tank. Amen? You may find yourself running on empty. That's where a lot of people have found themselves. They tried to get by on a little dab. You know they used to have that Brillo cream, Brother Bill? I used to use that when I was a teenager. A little dab of do ya. Oh, that's what most of the church will, that's their mindset. They think a little dab of do A little bit of Jesus, that's all they need. Just enough to keep them from going to hell. Just enough to appease their conscience, really, if you want to bring it down to where we can understand old-fashioned preaching this morning. To bring it down with the rubber meets the road, just enough to satisfy their mind. Just enough so they can sleep at night. Amen? Oh, they don't even need that. They just take sleeping pill. Come on. They don't need Jesus to help them sleep. They got it in the bottle. Yeah. They don't need Jesus. They don't need the Bible. I told you just a few Sundays ago, I liked it. They looking for their peace out of a bottle and they can find it in the Bible. Amen? They don't need Jesus. They got their drugs. Yeah. Amen? They don't need the Prince of Peace. They get their peace out of a little white pill. Oh, that preacher. I ain't talking about sinners this morning. I'm talking about people born again, Christians. Amen? I got news for you. There's a place you can find peace. Oh, hallelujah. Amen? And it ain't at the doctor's office. Oh, honey, when you, I'll tell you how temporal that peace is. Run out of your dope. Run out of your dope. Find out how quick you're. Oh, I can't, I can't stand it. I can't handle it. Run out of oil. Run out of oil. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's, let's move on. I know you don't love it either. It is good. Amen. It's almost as if they want to see what they can get by with and still make it. Can I use a word this morning that you don't hear very often? Pitiful. Amen. That's pitiful. I once heard a woman say, Brother Bill, if I can just make it by the skin of my teeth. If I can just make it by the skin of my teeth. Amen. That's the way a lot of people are. If I can just barely make it in. If I can just barely cross the finish line. Yeah, but what if you run out of oil? What if you run out of fuel before you get to the finish line? Amen? Amen. What if you run out of teeth? <laughs> the bill said. Many people running on fumes for a while, but sooner or later, they finally ran completely out of oil. Amen? That's why it's important this morning to go to church. That's why it's important this morning to read your Bible. That's why it's important this morning to have a prayer life. That's why it's important this morning to want more of Jesus than just enough to get by on. Amen. Amen? That's why it's important this morning to have a desire for more than what you got and not be satisfied sitting in the same old dead, dried up place you've been in for years. Amen? That's why it's important because you need some fuel. You need some oil this morning to keep your fire burning, to keep your light lit. Amen? That's why it's important this morning. Hallelujah. Let's read on. What does it say in verse 4 about the wise? It says, But the wise took oil in their vessels and their lamps. So now we see what made the difference between five of them being wise because up until he got to talking about the oil that they took, he said they were all virgins. They all had a lamp. They all started out on their journey. They left to meet the bridegroom. But then we see what the difference was. 
Five, the five foolish took no vessel with them that had any oil in it. And the wise, they took not only their lamp, but they took some oil with them in their vessel because they realized, hey, this oil that's in my lamp may not be enough till I get to the finish line. I might run out before I get there. Amen? But the foolish didn't think about that. They just thought, oh, surely this would be enough. This would probably be enough to get me there. Amen? Hallelujah. You see this bunch right here? This wise... This group of wise virgins. That is a part of them. That is a part of that group, you know. Little dad wouldn't do them. They had to have more. Amen. Going to church just on Easter or Christmas wasn't enough. They had to go every Sunday. Sitting in that same dead old church and listening to the same dead old sermons wasn't enough. They had to find somewhere where there was some live preaching at. Amen. They had to find somewhere where there was some oil. Because see, you can sit right in your pew and run out of gas. Yes, yeah. Amen. Yeah. You can sit right in your pool, your pew, and run out of oil. Amen. You can sit right where you're at. Just because you in church don't mean you're going when the trumpet sounds. Amen. Yeah. You can sit right in your pew and run out of fuel. You gotta get somewhere where the spout and the glory is coming out. Where you can get the word of God, amen, to fill up your vessel. Hallelujah, to give you some oil. It's, it's good to have a reserve. Amen? Amen? You ever talk about America's oil reserves, you know, and back whenever the oil was getting crazy and everything, they would let some out of the reserve in order to bring the gas prices down a little bit. But they would have a reserve just in case there was some kind of disaster where you couldn't get it from our suppliers, I suppose. So you'd have a reserve. You'd have something back to back you up. Amen? Something in case you ran out of the oil that you had. That's what these virgins had. These wise virgins, not only did they have oil in their lamp, not only did they have fuel, but they had, that wasn't enough for them. A little dab wouldn't do them. A little bit wouldn't do. They wanted more. This was that crazy bunch that liked to pray. Amen? My, while, I, while those five fools were watching one life to live, the five wise had themselves in the prayer closet crying out for more of Jesus. Amen. Oh my goodness. You talk about being able to preach this morning because most of the religious world as we know it today, most people go into church on an empty tank expecting that to get them on the glory. And listen to me. I know a little dab will do you for a while, but sooner or later, what are you going to do if it runs out before midnight, before the cry's made, before the bridegroom comes somewhere along your journey. If you run out of fuel, how are you ever going to cross the finish line? Amen. You're going to find yourself sitting somewhere on the side of the spiritual road with an empty tank and can't go nowhere. Because you ain't got no oil in your vessel to put into your lamp. Amen. The foolish people, they thought, oh, we got enough. A little dab's enough. That'd, that'd be enough. That'd get us there. Just a little dab would do me. Amen. I guarantee you, that the journey had to be longer than what the foolish when they first started out thought. They thought, oh, that's enough oil. I got enough. I got enough to make it. But listen to what happens. My goodness. In the fifth chapter, in the fifth verse, it says, While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, meaning while they were on their journey, and Jesus is tarrying now, amen. He's promised us He would come back. He hasn't came back yet. So now we're on that journey. Amen. While, they, while the bridegroom tarried, the Bible says in verse 6 with the bill, and this might have just been another, you know, any other night. And that's the way it's going to be. A day like any day. Amen. People are going to be going to work just like always. People are going to be going to school just like always. And even if we don't talk about the rapture this morning, which I'm still a firm believer in, there are people that get up just like every other day and thinking their day is just like it is. They've made plans for the weekend and their number's called that day. The next day they're laid out down here at Muster's Funeral Home. <clears throat> so whether you're talking about the rapture or you're talking about it's time for you to go home, the question is, is do you have enough fuel or do you have enough oil in your lamp to get you to the finish line? And these foolish virgins, they probably thought, well, you know, there's more time. There's... Even if they recognized they were getting low, they didn't know that this night would be the night. It says, At midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Midnight's coming. Sooner or later. I know you've heard it. 
I know you have gotten yourself to the place where you, where, where you, you, you are numb to the thought of Jesus returning or even death. Sometimes I think we believe we're going to live forever. I'm talking about just in this old natural carnal thing because people are not making any preparations for death whatsoever. Not making sure their soul is prepared to meet Jesus. Yeah. Living alone thinking, well, sooner or later I'll get right with God. Even those that don't believe they're right with the Lord, they think they have time to get right. They'll just put it off till tomorrow. But what if at midnight your number's up? What if at midnight the cry is made? Midnight's coming. Listen to what happens in verse 7. All those virgins arose and they trimmed their lamps. Now listen. Now we see these virgins, when they hear the cry, when they realize that the bridegroom is on his way, it's almost time to enter into the bridegroom's chamber. All those virgins arise and all of them begin to trim their lamps. Now the trimming means that you take the wick and the part that's burn up, burn up you know, you trim it, get the burnt part off, so that whenever you light your lamp, it'll have a fresh fire. It'll have a. It'll be completely full. You ever seen a wick that's about half burnt? You know, and you have to trim it back, and you have to. That's what they're talking about. They had to prepare their lamps to burn. But I got news for you: without any oil, it do you no good to trim your wick. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can have a nice looking wick. You can have a nice looking lamp with a bill without any oil, and it ain't gonna burn. Amen. So all these virgins get up, and they begin to trim, and they begin to make plans. They begin to get things ready. But the foolish realize something. Oh no! Verse 8 says, The foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Our lamps are gone out, meaning there is no, we have no fuel, we have no oil to light the lamp. Oh, we have ran out of gas. That's what most Christians suffer from today. They run low on fuel. Amen. Oh my goodness. Just a little dab. They think it'd get them home. What's going to happen if at midnight you get up and you come to the realization, oh no, I didn't have enough. The oil in my vessel that I should have brought with me, I left back the house, or I never did bother with filling my vessel up. They said, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. You see, you had to have your own oil. You can't make it in on the skirt tails of your preacher. You can't make it in on the coattails of your preacher. You can't make it in on grandma's relationship with Jesus. Amen. You can't make it in. Well, mama was saved. Well, that's great. But are you? Amen. Mama knew Jesus. Well, that's great. But do you? Amen. Mama had a relationship with Jesus. Yeah, that's great. But do you? Because that's not going to carry any weight when it gets time for leaving. Amen. It's going to be whether you have all your in your vessel. Not what mama had. That's what Paul was talking about when he told Timothy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which first dwelt in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. He goes on to say with you, and I am persuaded that is in thee also. He didn't stop and say, well, I, I know because of the faith of your mama. I know because of the faith of your grandma. No, he said, I'm persuaded that it's in you too. It's great that mama had oil in her vessel. It's great that grandma had oil in her vessel. It's great that granddad had oil in his vessel. But the question is today, do you have oil in your vessel? Are you just trying to get by? Are you just to get the, the Brillo attitude, Brillo cream attitude that a little dab will do me? I'll make it in by the skin of my teeth. Yeah, but what if you don't? What if you run out of oil somewhere, somewhere between here and the finish line? What if you run out of gas? I tell you, the Bible says in some of the saddest words that you'll read in the Bible, verse 10, it says, And while they went to buy, while they went to get ready, Brother Bill, well, oh, they decided, you know, hey, this seems pretty, it's pretty imminent. We, we better hurry. We better hurry and go get us some oil for our vessel. While they went to buy, Brother Sleece, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Too late for them now. When they started out on their journey and they surmised whether they had enough oil or not, and I don't know, maybe they didn't care. Maybe the enemy had convinced them that it didn't matter. Oh, you got enough to get by on. 
Don't worry about all that other stuff. You don't need that prayer. You don't need to study the Word. You don't need a relationship with Jesus beyond what you got at the altar that night. Just ride on in on that. Don't worry about getting any more Word. Don't worry about getting any more Spirit. Don't worry about getting any more God. Don't worry about having a personal relationship with Him. What you got that night will see you through. You know what I mean? People trying to live on the old they got 40 years ago. Amen. It's time for us to realize, hey, check the fuel hand and see how much oil you got in your vessel because it may not be enough. To get you to the finish line. Amen. My goodness. Well, they go and they try to get ready. While they're gone, Jesus comes. And the Bible says in the 11th verse, listen to this. Afterward, it's too late now. Sooner or later, it'll be too late for you. Amen. You've played around. You've played around and you've tried to appease your conscience and you've tried to just get by with just enough. I don't want a whole lot of that Jesus thing. Just enough. That's just what I just a little bit. I want to see what I can get by with, see what I can get by doing and still make it. Boy, I wouldn't want to put my soul in that kind of jeopardy. Amen. I wouldn't want to rely on the oil that's in my lamp if it's a lamp. I wouldn't want to rely on a little dab gonna do me. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want all I can get. You can call me a spiritual glutton if you want to, but I want all I can get. Say, oh, how much more, how much of Jesus is it going to take, Brother Billy, to satisfy you? I don't know, I ain't got enough yet. A little bit more. And then when I got that, you can ask me, and I'll say, a little bit more. A little bit more. I need some more of that. Amen. Give me some more of the Spirit. Give me some more of the Word. Give me some more of a relationship with it. I'm not satisfied. Amen. I'm glad that I'm in with the wise bunch. Amen. May not be a popular bunch, Brother Beetle. Amen. May not be the ones that seem like they're having the fun as far as what the world calls fun. Amen. But there ain't nothing more enjoyable and any more, any more uh, satisfying than living for Jesus. Amen. There ain't an alcoholic beverage that can give you the kind of feeling that that the Spirit of God does. There ain't nothing you can smoke, nothing you can shoot in your veins that can give you the spiritual high that Jesus brings. His peace, His love, His contentment. My goodness. And your little dad may not do you. Amen. Say, Brother Billy, you're talking about works. No, I'm not. I'm talking about you trying to get by on what little dad you got years ago until finally... You lose your faith completely. Now see, that's where it all lies. Now if you believe in eternal, in eternal security that is not dependent upon your faith, well then you can believe that 40 years ago you knelt down at the altar and you accepted Jesus or you prayed to repent the, the uh, sinner's prayer and a prayer of repentance and you're fine and you never have to pray again. You never have to read the Word again. But I don't believe that. I believe that our relationship with Jesus doesn't depend on the faith that we had 30 years ago. It depends on the faith that we have today. I believe that it depends upon the fuel, the oil that we have in our vessel today. And that is not, that is, I'm not, I ain't said a word to you about works. I told you that this comes, this filling of this vessel comes through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ made way by the cross of Calvary and the sacrifice that He made there. The Spirit that it made way for for it to be in your life. The Word that it made way for to be revealed into your life. Studying the Word. Having a prayer life. Seeking the face of God. Having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Having a desire to have more than just a little dab of God. Having a desire. I'd be, I'd be a scared this morning. How's that for country words? I'd be a scared if I was just thinking, well, I'm just satisfied with what I got 30 years ago. As you may find yourself at the end of the way, before you cross the finish line, out of gas, and unable to finish. Amen. I wouldn't try to live off my relationship with God I used to have. I'd check my vessel today. Because there's going to come a time when you're going to need your vessel and the oil that is in it. Amen. There's going to come a time whenever the oil that you had in your lamp was not enough. These foolish virgins, you can say they never knew God or you can say that they, they never realized you know, the Spirit, but if you read it when they started out, their lamps were burning. 
They had oil. Amen. They were virgins. They started out on the same journey that the five wives started out on, but they ran out of oil in their lamps. And their light went out, and they had no oil to start the fire again. Amen. You'll find yourself in that place if you try to just get by on what you used to have. Oh, my, my, my. You'll find yourself at midnight with an empty vessel and no light and the bridegroom's voice calling, Come, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And while you're trying to get ready, something you should have already been doing, something you should have already been doing when you're trying to get ready, the bridegroom comes and those that are ready go in and the door is shut. What happens to those that went to get ready but it was too late, Brother Bill? The Bible says afterward came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But He answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. And the next words of Jesus would be this, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And then, It'll be too late. That little dab you depended on wasn't enough to get you through. You'll find yourself on an empty tank and it's too late to do anything about it. Do you realize how many people are in that situation and shape today? And if somebody, if somebody don't wake them up, that's exactly where they're going to stay until it's too late. One of the old hymnal writers wrote, these words. Dear friends, the time is drawing near when life shall pass away. Tis then too late for heaven to start. Twill be too late to pray. Too late, too late. Twill be too late to pray. Too late, too late when life has passed away. Twill be too late when Jesus comes on that great judgment day. To call His saints to their reward will be too late to pray. You have no promise of your life, but death is on His way. How sad twill be when Jesus says, too late, too late to pray. Don't neglect your relationship with Jesus. Or God forbid, one day it may be too late for you to pray. 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, the 2nd verse. I'm going to close with this this morning. The Apostle Paul writing to the church of Corinth and to us as well today. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You ain't promised how many more days you got to fool around. You're not promised how many more days you have to just try to barely get by spiritually. Amen? How many people ever just barely got by financially? Amen. Ain't no fun, is it? <clears throat> ain't no fun spiritually. <clears throat> we got people that don't know whether they're saved. or One day they feel like they're saved. The next day they feel like they lost. Don't have any kind of personal thing going on with the Lord. Oh, they prayed once. They go to church on Easter. They go to church on Christmas. Yeah, but where are they getting the oil from now? What about your vessel? If we could do it, if we could do an inventory of the stock of oil that we have today, it might drive some of us to our knees. Amen. Say, oh God, fill my vessel. Give me enough oil to make it, Jesus. It might cause some people to go to church. It might cause some people to find a church where the Word of God is being preached so that they can get some oil in their vessel. What is that song we sing? What we need is a soul-filling station. Amen. A full service open 24 hours a day. Amen. Pumping nothing but that high octane. Amen. Hallelujah. Talking about the Word of God. Super salvation. Amen. Where a heart out of gas can fill up for that fast getaway. Amen. You're going to have to have some oil in your vessel. You're going to have to have some oil in your lamp. Amen. That's why some people can't be a light to the world because they're out of oil. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They're out of oil. Can't be a light to someone else because they're out of oil. And you ain't going to be able to, well, my brother's a preacher. Well, that's great. 
But where do you stand with Jesus? Amen. Where do you stand with God today? Hallelujah. I appreciate the Word of the Lord today. Amen. I thank God that we're living in an hour where right now, if you're listening to me, it don't matter where you're listening, United Kingdom, Netherlands, Singapore, Hong Kong, Amen, Israel, Saudi Arabia, wherever you're listening, you still have a chance today. If you're listening to this preacher this morning and you wanted to turn us off, you still have a chance today to get things right with you and you. You've been trying to go, you've been riding on empty a long time. You know, you can cruise for a while. If you find a hill to go down when you run out of gas for the bill, you cruise for a little bit without no fuel. And when you run into the place where the road's flat, you're fixing to stop right where you're at. Amen? But there's a chance for you today because you're listening to me. I like the testimonies we get, and a lot of them are from older people. That lets me know I must be an old-fashioned preacher. A woman contacted me this week from Canada. She said, I listen to y'all all the time on iTunes because this is the kind of preaching that I was raised with. She's an older lady. Listen to me, church. I know that sometimes you may feel like, well, I don't know why I even get ready and go. I know sometimes you feel like <clears throat> you just don't can't hardly put one foot in front of the other, let alone go to church. You better go while the word is available. Because there's coming a time. The Bible talks about a famine for the hearing of the word of God. There's going to be people. It ain't it ain't all that pleadings for the bill. I know, Brother Sleece, we have churches on almost on every street corner. It's a famine now. Oh yeah. Go and see if you can find the true. I'm talking about the true word of God. You don't have to leave your house. We've got a dozen Christian channels on television. Channel surf. And see how much real words you find this morning. Amen. That's the only thing going to get you through. Your vehicle won't run on watered down gasoline. Anybody ever got water in their gas before? You don't go very far, do you, Brother Bill? Spit and sputter what? Your lamp won't burn. Your lamp won't burn if you got water in your oil. Better get a hold of the real oil. Amen. My goodness. Hallelujah. That way we can be ready. I want to be ready and I, I want to tell other I want to get some other people ready too. Amen. I'm not just satisfied with having oil in my vessel. I want to tell other people how they can get oil in their vessel so they can make it too. Amen. I don't want to have the attitude, well, I won't make it. That's all I care about. Well, you're crazy. We're supposed to have a burden. He put us here to be a light to a lost and dying world so that they can have what we got. So that they can find the way. So we can show them the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody else this morning have something before we go.